Greetings, this is Michael Thompson. What I'd like to do for 10 minutes or so is to give you some idea of what my courses are like, my courses that I teach through Royal Fireworks Press, uh, give you some idea of what the courses are like and what your children would be doing if they were to take uh, some of my courses. So um, you should be able to see my desktop. When I teach my courses, this is, this is my setup. Normally I would see you know, all my students' faces in a window on the left side, but let me go through a few main points that I want you to understand. First, my courses are based on my curriculum. For example, at level three, that would include Grammar Voyage, Caesar's English, Essay Voyage, A World of Poetry. It would include literature, a trilogy of novels, a practice book. And uh, as you see, there's a website for the course. And uh, the entire enterprise is intensely academic. That's what I'm concerned with. I want the kids to have a solid academic background. Um, no one ever flunked out of college because he could not write a short story. If you don't do well in college, you, it'll be because you don't know your grammar, you can't punctuate properly, you haven't done enough reading, that you have the powerful vocabulary base that you need, and so on and so on. It's your powerful academic foundation that establishes the basis for your future excellence. So that's what I'm trying to do. If uh, you know, if you, if you look at any of my courses, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see academic vocabulary, powerful academic vocabulary. Um, and that program runs all year long. It is not a unit. I don't do units. We, we do vocabulary all year long and it keeps building up. Um, we do grammar beginning at the beginning of the year and we continue with the grammar reinforcement all year long, long after we've actually learned it, we keep doing it and doing it and doing it. It's the basis, for example, of punctuation. If you don't know your grammar, there's no way to teach you to punctuate. So you're not going to be able to do academic writing. So the grammar lasts all year long, lessons every week. Um, for the formal writing, uh, my concentration is on standard writing. So I want you to be able to write a good sentence and then a paragraph and then an essay. Depending on the level of the student, you might be writing formal research papers using the Modern Language Association method. But if you can't write a good sentence, you can't write. It doesn't matter what you know about paragraphs. So first things first, from the very beginning, from level one and two and three, we emphasize the beauty and the beauty of the of the correct sentence, a well written sentence. Um, there is literature. We bring I bring in the literature in the second quarter, and we read three major novels. Um, uh, we read one every term, and we have open ended Socrat Socratic discussions about those. Um, and we do poetry every week, so that just gives you some idea. Let's take a look. Let me give you a sense of the, of the course website. Uh, here I am, I'm at level three. That's sort of a nice middle grade level. Um, and, if, and you see at the course website, there are lots of things, introductions to the books, announcements about the holidays, um, semester grades are a part of this and so forth. MCT Live, that's where the kids log in. That's where they log in to be in the weekly online class. There's an online class called MCT Live every week. And kids can either come to the class or they can watch the recording. These are all recorded so the kids have access to them. Then if you look down, you can see that the, the assignments are organized by weeks. You know, in week one, they have grammar, poetry, and punctuation. And by the time they get to week, uh, let's say six, there's grammar, poetry, vocabulary, and punctuation. And that keeps building up over time, but it's all organized by weeks. So the kids always know where they are. They can always look at their assignments. They send me their assignments via email. That's what they do. So uh, this gives you some sense of the course website. Uh, you know, if you want to, we could take a look at a grammar page. See, here's a page, this is week uh, 12, the grammar page. 
and you see an analysis, a nice analysis of a sentence with parts of speech, parts of sentence, phrases and clauses, that, that's what we will go over. And then down below, they have some challenge sentences. And we go through these together in class. We check these in class. I take a long-term view of these things. In a regular school, a child turns in, so let's say a grammar test or a grammar quiz, the teacher gives the child, let's say a D, a C. And that's that, that the kid gets a D. And the, and, and the child is never required to actually figure the sentence out. Um, that's not what we do in my class. In my class, when you send me a grammar assignment, if it isn't right, I send it back to you. And I say, well, um, yes, but uh, rapidly is not an adjective. What can it be? And so the child has to look at it again and try to figure it out and then send it back to me. And we send, we, we have a conversation and we send that grammar analysis back and forth until the kid, until, until the kid makes an A, until it's an A, until it's right. Then I enter the assignment. So I don't even enter the assignment until it's an A. And th is this harder to do? Yes. Does it take more time? Yes. It's more demanding on the student? Yes. It's more demanding on me? Yes. But in the end, every analysis, we stick with it until the child gets it. Then I enter it. So all the grades I enter are in effect A's. Um, in my courses, grades are not the focus. I don't give letter grades for daily assignments or weekly assignments. I give a letter, I give a report card at the end of each semester, and that has a letter grade on it. But during, during the regular week, those regular daily assignments are not graded. I don't want the children to be thinking about grades. I want them to thinking about, I want them thinking about subjects and predicates. I want them thinking about paragraphing. I want them thinking about Treasure Island and Long John Silver. I want them to think about the poem we just read. That's what I want. I don't want them thinking about grades. They can think about grades in, in a different school. Not on my watch. I want their minds on the knowledge. That's what I want. My classes, my online classes, my MCT live classes, are silly and fun and we laugh and I tease them and I challenge them, but it's all focused intensely on the knowledge. So I thought it might be good to show you a little bit of one of the slideshows. Here is a slideshow. You can see all the various slides and I'm not gonna show you every single slide. I just want you to get a sense of it. You know, what, what am I doing in the class, in, a, in, a, in an MCT live class with my students? Those classes last for an hour, almost an hour. Let's say 55 minutes most of the time. So here are some of the things that we would do. Rather than actually run the slideshow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna present it this way. You can still see it, but we can go faster. So this is, this is the beginning. You know, I, I, I admit the kids into the class and I ask them to put their first and last names on their window and to tell them to keep their videos on. And then the class begins. We talk about what week it is. We talk about how to send an assignment. I, if there's news about breaks, I tell them that. This is an assignment. They're to read the poetry book in the second quarter by themselves, the whole book at one time. Um, then we have our poem of the week. Now this week's poem was by the great Irish poet, William Butler Yeats. I showed them Yeats's house. I showed him the interior. He lived in a Norman castle. Yeats lived in a Norman castle for crying out loud. So I showed them the interior. And then um, we have rig for silent running, which means shh. And then I read them the poem. I whispered, I am too young. And then I am old enough. I read them the whole poem. We talk a little bit about the poetics. I show them some interesting things. Then we move to a new topic. Um, in this case, it's Modern Language Association writing and punctuation and proofreading. And so this would be uh, a clause punctuation assignment. This would be um, 
actually proofreading. Let me show you this one. This one. Look at this. Here's what happens. I ask the students, what mistakes do you see? And they tell me. And when, when they tell me, once they tell me, then I let the circle drop down. But they have to find them. And we go through this, we go through this proofreading bit by bit until they have discovered all the issues that I want them to be aware of. You don't use exclamation points in an academic paper, right? So that's what that is. Um, that's, our, that's, our, that's our proofreading uh, exercise for the week. We talk about essay structure and some of the features of a modern language association uh, essay. Then we go into our vocabulary lesson and we have a discussion about the different lessons that we've already covered. We go back and we review every time. Um, and then we do a close-up focus on the, on the words and the, cl the classic words and the Latin stems that we have studied. Then we go into our literature discussion for the week. And uh, I'll probably talk to them about the great uh, illustrator N.C. Wyeth because he was the, he's the American illustrator genius. Um, I actually went to his, uh, my wife and I went to his, uh, went to the Wyeth Museum. And so I showed the students um, that I'd actually seen these paintings in real life. Then we have our discussion. Now the discussions are open-ended Socratic discussions. It's not find the answer in the book and copy it into the blank. There's no find and copy. We don't do find and copy. I show them a question and they have to think about it. And we talk about that question together and different students contribute different ideas. So it's an open-ended literature discussion. And it's about thinking. They have to learn to think. I don't want them to learn to just parrot back whatever I say. I want them to have to learn to think. Okay? So that's what that is. That probably takes 15 to 20 minutes where we discuss the, some questions. Then we go into grammar. I might show students an example of one, one of the students. This is, a, this, is a, this is student work. Okay? Then we go into a sentence. See, look at this. We do the part, we, we discuss it together. The students have to solve the parts of speech. Then they have to solve the parts of sentence. Then they have to solve the phrases. Then they have to uh, solve the uh, clauses. That's where we are now. See, we haven't even reached, we haven't even reached mid-year and they're, all, they're already doing four level analysis. And we keep doing that all year long. See, sometimes, take a, let's take, take a look at this one again. Sometimes I make the words up. Now, why would that be? How could they possibly solve the grammar if the words aren't real? They can, because they learn the structure. They learn the structure of sentences. So moving along, we go into practice sentences. And you know what they're going to do there is it's this this is really phrase work. They're learning about gerund phrases, four level analysis, and so forth. I ask them about problems. I ask them to identify things. What is this? Well, his is an adjective in this sentence, but it's a pronoun in this sentence. And so that's what we do. We talk about those and so forth. So in the end, the class ends and our final discussion is, I say, what is, your, what is your favorite thing from this lesson? Raise your hand and tell me your favorite, your favorite moment in this week's lesson. And so they do. And it's fun. It's so much fun. My, my favorite thing was the poem. I like the poem so much. You know, we have a talk and the different, and different students tell me about their favorite part of the lesson. Now, what I would say to you is, favorite is a magic word. If I ask students, what is your favorite? You see what the students does. 
that that causes the student to make an, an emotional attachment that's positive. And the student doesn't even realize it, but he or she is actually saying, I like grammar. I like vocabulary. And the student hears all these other students saying this. My favorite part of the lesson was the essay structure. My favorite part of the, of the lesson was the grammar with the gerund phrase saying. So it's about a positive view of academic knowledge. All right. So that gives you a sense of what we do. We have a website. There are weekly assignments. The students send me, they send me their assignments. I record those, but I don't record letter grades. I record the receipt of the assignments. So, um, we, you know, every week we have a full hour discussion and it's, uh, they, either, they can either come or else it's recorded. The entire enterprise is focused on academic knowledge with grammar, vocabulary, poetry, academic writing, all those things. And we have a great time. Uh, is it a lot of work? Yes, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work for them. It's a lot of work for me. But we have a good time and um, the kids learn. They learn. So thank you. Thank you for viewing this. Um, I'm glad you were able to. I was glad I was able to explain these things. I had some, uh, I've had a few beeps and bumps, but that, that's okay. That's part of, that's part of life too. So um, I will uh, stop recording now. Thank you. Bye.